Today I'll be talking about anemia. Anemias are often broken down by the size of the red blood cell or the MCV. So we'll be working through microcytic, normocytic and macrocytic anemia and the key points you need to understand for each. Firstly, microcytic anemia. A smaller red blood cell volume occurs when there is decreased hemoglobin production. The mnemonic to remember is TAILS. T for thalassemia, where there is faulty hemoglobin synthesis. A for anemia of chronic disease. I for iron deficiency, the most common, L for lead poisoning, and S for sideroblastic anemia, where the cells are unable to use iron effectively to make hemoglobin. Remember, red blood cells have four globin chains, two alpha, two beta, each with iron or heme. Thalassemia occurs when there is mutation of the genes that form these chains, and hence the red blood cell can carry less heme and oxygen. There are varying types, but broadly, alpha thalassemia trait is less severe, and the buzzword you'll see in exams is Asian or and African backgrounds. Just remember A for Asia or Africa. Beta thalassemias are more severe. Some forms are compatible with life, but for beta, the buzzword you'll hear is Mediterranean or Greek origins. Iron deficiency anemias occur where there is increased demand, such as pregnancy, chronic bleeding, such as heavy periods, peptic ulcers, Inadequate absorption, such as in gastric bypass surgery. Symptoms include glossitis, a swollen tongue, dry, pale skin, spoon-shaped nails, hair loss, and pica or unusual cravings. Bloods will show decreased serum iron and serum ferritin, which is a marker of iron storage. A blood film will show hypochromic and microcytic cells with abnormal shapes and unequal sizes. Pencil cells, as you can see, may also be seen. Thalassemia on the other hand, tends to have more uniformity in cell size and shapes, and a much lower hemoglobin compared to MCV. Normocytic anemia is where the size of the red cells are within normal range, but there is a decreased amount of them circulating in the blood. The average lifespan of a red cell is around 120 days, so for some reason they aren't hanging around that long, or they aren't being made enough. If we see increased reticulocytes, so premature red blood cells, we are more likely to think of loss or destruction of blood cells. If the reticulocytes are normal or decrease, then this suggests there is an issue with production. This might be due to bone marrow disease or also chronic disease. Chronic kidney disease particularly is a cause. Erythropoietin is synthesized in the kidneys and regulated by oxygen tension in renal tissue. So, chronic kidney disease can cause anemia too. Hemolysis, as the name suggests, is the destruction of the red blood cells. Lab tests may show high reticulocytes, low haptoglobin, and high lactate dehydrogenase. Lactate dehydrogenase is high when there is tissue destruction, and haptoglobin mops up hemoglobin from the circulation. If there is lots of destruction of red blood cells, then there's lots of hemoglobin lying around, and haptoglobin has to go clean it up, so it gets depleted. There are lots of causes for hemolysis. Metabolic abnormalities such as G6DP deficiency, where the lack of this enzyme leaves the red cell prone to oxidative stress and destruction. Hemoglobin abnormalities, such as sickle cell or thalassemia, can also cause this. Others include membrane abnormalities, such as hereditary spherocytosis, immune-mediated, mechanical destruction, or even some drugs. I've included some blood films. Here we see sickle cell, a point mutation in beta chains where it distorts at low oxygen. Here we see hereditary spherocytosis, where the cells are round instead of biconcave. Interestingly, these mutations are protective against malaria. Finally, down here we see bite cells, where it looks like there's literally a bite taken out of the cell, and Heinz body, which are inclusions within the red cell of denatured hemoglobin. This is often seen in G6DP deficiency. Finally, let's talk about macrocytic anemia. We can break down macrocytic anemia into megaloblastic or macronormoblastic anemia. What's the difference? Well, megaloblastic is much bigger and are often oval shaped instead of round shaped in macronormoblastic. Megaloblastic anemia, think B12 and folate deficiency, where macronormoblastic think other causes such as chronic alcoholism, liver disease, and also hypothyroidism. Vitamin B12 and folate are both important to DNA synthesis. So when they are deficient, you get impaired blood cell production, creating megaloblasts, large nucleated red blood cell precursors. The difference between B12 and folate is also worth knowing. B12 deficiency is less common because of storage capacity. 
Usually, deficiency will be seen um, slower in onset, such as in the elderly. It is absorbed in the ileum but needs intrinsic factor to be absorbed. Pernicious anemia occurs due to lack of intrinsic factor and is most commonly autoimmune in corpse. On the other hand, folic acid deficiency is more common with faster onset. Folate deficiency in a pregnant woman can result in neural tube defect. Dietary deficiency may be seen in chronic alcoholics, poor diets, or the elderly, so are certain drugs, such as methotrexate, a folate antagonist. Signs and symptoms. Think more neurological. Numbness and tingling in the hands and feet, balance issues, confusion. It is important not to give folic acid alone to any B12 deprived patient, as even though anemia is reversible, there is still a neurological deficit. A blood smear will show really large red cells. Hypersegmented neutrophils may also be seen, and teardrop cells may also be seen. I think of teardrop cells as the bone marrow is crying, so the issue is in production early on. And that draws us to the end of our anemia talk. Check out our notion notes for more information and feel free to ask us any questions.